Hey, this is Jeremy from Earth Grounds, and you're listening to Vulgar Display of Podcast. Welcome to the Vulgar Display, a podcast live from the Barn Studio. You got the Mox here with Anthony. How's it going, man? It's going great. Yeah. How you doing? Doing good. We got a special guest online. We have Jeremy from Earth Yo, yo, yo. Jeremy, what's up, man? Dude, uh, happy to be here. Yeah. Rock and rolling. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Got the new EP out, Tongue Tied, out on yeah. so- Solid State Records. This was a ma- one-man band, right? You did a little bit of everything on this, or maybe all of it. The- that's true uh yeah so earth crones has always been kind of uh my brainchild so i've always been kind of the writer of uh the band um so all previous records were pretty much all written by me uh with this record i i i did go and work with uh, a producer um his name is ryan latrue he used to be in for today he uh he also works with like he does a lot of producing for like Gideon and we came as Romans. He's been doing a lot of bands lately. Um, but, uh, yeah, so first time working with a producer. Um, so that was, uh, definitely a different experience, but a very, uh, very good experience. And, you know, with every record I've done up to this point, I've always kind of known, I guess, like what I wanted to accomplish with the record. And this one, I just wasn't really sure. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go and work with somebody. Cause I had a lot of ideas, but I just didn't know where to funnel it or what, what would be the strongest, uh, I guess, act of, uh, pursue, pursuing or act, whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> the best hard. way to pursue it, the best way to, to accomplish what I wanted to do. But, uh, uh, anyway, so I went and I worked with Ryan and, uh, he, um, he did a really good job of, kind of packaging earth groans a little neater like we're he he so nicely puts it he says that i write uh music for crazy people uh, so uh so he's like well we're gonna keep some of the weirdness but we're gonna package it a little nicer so we can kind of cast a broader net and uh, i think that we did that pretty well but yeah and then so after i worked with him i came back to my studio i have a studio here in south dakota uh, that's my my real job my big boy job i guess hmm. um and uh and then I, I wrote and recorded everything but the drums. Uh, he And then I saw so I hired a drummer to come in and track drums on the record. Super cool, man. And this EP rocks, bro. Like this. It's a thank you. I appreciate banger. that. Absolute banger. Is this sort of a bookend on your EP run? I mean, I know we have what? four what five since like 2007 yes wow yep this is this is number six. So this actually uh, concludes our contract with Solid State. It is kind of a bookend, maybe. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what I'm doing next. I, uh, you know, I got this far, and now this was kind of like the end site, and then now I'm here, and I'm like, well, now what do I do? So um, we'll see. I'll keep on rocking. Uh, I, I'm already writing for more material. Uh, what that ends up being, if it's you know, uh, re-sign with Solid State or trying somebody else, or maybe going independent. I don't know. A lot of a lot of ideas and a lot of pathways I could go going forward so i'm not really sure what to do from here so does that potential i guess what you would call freedom does that excite you a little bit like sort of the unknown of what's what's coming next yeah uh, i mean there's definitely there's definitely some excitement but there's also a little bit of fear there too because i'm like you know uh, i was like i could go to try and go for some of these other labels but they might say no but i don't know the a lot of pan a lot of bands have been going independent and i've heard a lot of good things about it but it would be nice to have, you know, somebody, it would it'd be nice to have a team behind you, you know, doing some of the things that we're not able to do on our end, like some of the politics and all that business and just the, ex- uh, the extra support and, uh, you know, publicity is always good too. So I don't know. Can we talk about Overgrown, the first single and specifically the video? I think the video it's the sort of buried alive thing that I think every, I would assume everybody is like scared of or gives them a little bit of <laughs> feelings. Like, yep. like watching that video seriously kind of makes my skin crawl in, in a way. And I'm sure that's part <laughs> of the point, right? 
Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, the whole point of that video is just to be like anxiety do inducing. When I talked to the guy that the producer of the video, when I talked to him, I was like, I want to go like for like a saw theme or something. You know, I want it to be. I want. You remember when Saw came out back then and how eerie and uh, anxiety inducing that movie was? Oh, like, yeah. I wanted to like go for something like that. I wanted that the vibe. I wanted that to be the vibe. You know. I'd say mission accomplished, man. <laughs> yeah, the video's sick, and it does. It, gi you. it gives you that feeling, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I like it or not, but <laughs> <laughs> I like I the mean, way I it sounds. Like I don't that. like the way it makes me feel. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm. I really, I really love the whole like, and you can hear this in our music. The whole push and pull feeling, like a horror movie. It's like it builds the, te the tension and then it releases. Like that's the way I like to like. I, that's the way I like to write music is like you build the tension and then you release it and you kind of lock into something and then you build the tension and then you re release it. I don't know. That's my philosophy when I'm like trying to write music. Do you think of uh, visuals when you are writing music? That's a good question. I feel like sometimes I do. I would say most of the time I don't though. No, I don't think I do. I don't know. I don't know what I think <laughs> about when I'm writing music. Well, on EP seven, maybe you'll have an answer for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but so like the concept of the video, is that something that you came up with or somebody, somebody came up with that idea? Um, that was, yeah, the, the video producer's name is Fleisch, uh, John Fleischman. I wanted to do a, I wanted to do a person locked in, um, like a glass cage and it started filling up with water. Ooh, yeah. uh, and then the whole video is basically same same concept like instead of being buried alive you're basically like drowning alive but we we had no way of finding somebody to make something like that i mean our video our budget was not gonna it was not gonna cover a, a human aquarium so <laughs> right some david bland yeah. type stuff <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not sure which would be worse uh, drowning yeah. alive or Both both are rough for me drowning yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah terrifying i think so too i feel i feel like that too but yep. I don't know. So, uh, Jeremy, you've actually been popping up on my feed for a long time, and I had no idea. I love these covers that you do on your Instagram. Oh, yeah. The one you did with Zayo and Five Year Wonder was amazing. Oh, nice. Yeah, classic. I yeah. mean, Zayo was, that was my first metal band. So um, I had to pay some homage there. Yeah, I think um, you and a lot of people, you know, Zayo, yeah, Zayo was such a pivotal part of uh, the metal scene coming up. Yep, definitely. Yeah, Parade of Chaos is the first the first record I heard by them. And it, at first, I wasn't really into metal. I was also like ten or something when I heard this, so uh, I had no no idea. It was kind of scary to me, but something about it was just super intriguing. And I just I kept listening to it, and then all of a sudden, I was a Zayo fan. And then then I was like a metal like a total metalhead from that point on. So when you go back and listen to records like that, that were pretty formative for you and your, in your metal upbringing, your musical upbringing, what do they sound like now? Do they sound dated to you? Do they sound just as cool now as they did then? Like, especially when you're, you know, that music is so accessible these days, you can hear a million bands if you wanted to. Sure. Um, I would say, I mean, since there's nostalgia attached to it, most a lot of those records definitely like they still hold up for me, and they they still I still get just as stoked when I listen to like Parade of Chaos like now as as I did when I was a younger kid, and even like I feel like maybe some of the old the old hardcore stuff like is like I'll hear I'll listen to it again now, and I'm like oh dang that's a like that's a sick idea like I'll be inspired to write something similar you know to stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, some of those bands, I'll definitely, I'll hear some of that older stuff and I'll cringe a little bit just because some of that stuff is, is a little bit dated. And I mean, the quality obviously isn't there, you know, for technology back then recording those records way back when compared to what we have now. So some of that stuff now, like when I'll hear about, like, oh man, that recordings did not hold up <laughs> right. at all. <laughs> yeah. Especially with you being a sound engineer, I, I bet it's mm -hmm. easy to critique some of the things that yeah. you hear. Yeah, it's a it's a a curse in a way. Um, right. It's a good thing and a bad thing, you know. Obviously, I love I love making records and I love designing the sound of records and all that stuff. But at the same time, it's really hard for me just to listen to a record and enjoy it for the sake of art. When I think about bands like Zayo and specifically a band like Converge, but you yeah. guys as well, it's always weird when I talk to metalheads that hear that and they always think it's angry. 
But to me, yeah. th there's so much grittiness and rawness to it that it's really actually beautiful to me. Um, and yeah, I, I, get I, the, I get the same sense with Earth Groans as well. Thank you, man. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, and you, have you seen that meme where it's like uh, the dude on stage is Godzilla and then uh, the vocalist at the merch table and it's Barney? Have you seen that meme? I haven't but seen that's that. I haven't seen that. Okay, that, that's totally me. It's like on stage, like I have this whole another persona. It's just like really intense and like really passionate. And then I'm on, like, and then when I'm at the merch table, I'm like the nicest dude ever in the world and stuff. And I just like want to give everyone hugs and stuff. And but uh, I get tagged in that one a lot. That's why I, I brought that up. Funny. So speaking of uh, you being on stage, so you're playing a um, festival in July, a live music festival. It's a very dynamic bill. Never played that one. Don't know anything sure. about it. But yes, we are playing that. <laughs> I checked it out earlier. Uh, it's very, I guess, dynamic. Um, I think you're probably one of the, uh, maybe the only band on the extreme music side um, <laughs> that I saw. Sick. <laughs> How well, people will remember us at least. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, how did that come about? How did you end up on a on a fest like that? You know, I don't, I don't actually know. Um, I think from what I hear about this festival is that it. It's been around for a while, but they haven't had heavy bands on this festival, or they, maybe they used to, and now uh, and then they went against that, and uh, they didn't have, they just like had contemporary, modern, whatever mm -hmm. for a long time, and now they're uh, introducing a heavy scene or something, or a heavy couple heavy bands. I don't really honestly know. Uh, they just emailed me one day and said, "Hey, we got this festival," and. Uh, the money looked really good, and I was like, well, shoot, I guess uh, we have a lot of fans in Ohio, so um, I thought, why not? Some of these festivals are tough because, you know, you show up and you're like that weird heavy band, and it feels like it's kind of like church camp where there's all these, like, young kids running around and like, I don't, this isn't my ideal, like, clientele or fan base, but at the same time, like I was one of those little kids running around at festivals like that when I was younger and that music totally shaped like seeing heavy bands like that totally shaped like me into like the musician I am today. So I can't knock it either. It can be a risk to them because sure. I'm sure some, somebody's not going to like it. <laughs> so <laughs> we, uh, used to play music a little bit back in the day and we uh booked ourselves to a hippie fest one time and we were a heavy band Sick. ripped off zayo as much as we could and uh, <laughs> we pulled in and we thought at you know on paper it looks cool like yeah let's play a hippie fest and convert a bunch of hippies to to metal and when we pulled up we're like oh man we we, <laughs> we can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> this this might be a little bit bigger of a task than, than what we were thinking on paper yeah but yeah, that'd be super cool to do that, to get yeah. to, to bring somebody to that world and see all the amazing things. We know that world because we're in it so much, but to somebody that's not, that'd be awesome. You mentioned uh, South sure. Dakota and your studio being in South Dakota. You living in South Dakota. What's the scene like up there? Um, you know, it is small. I mean, South Dakota has 850,000 people in the whole state. And I live outside of Sioux Falls, which is, I, I don't know, we might have 250,000 people metro. So it's it's obviously smaller. Cows outnumber us three to one, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it's a smaller scene, but we don't get very many tours because it is such a small market, probably B or C market. So we usually it gets skipped. So when a show does happen, people get stoked. You know, people yeah. are, here are, are hungry hungry for shows where are you guys at again sorry so we're in st louis okay yeah so obviously st louis you guys get you know probably three four shows a week you know out here we get you know like three four shows in six months you know or something maybe three four shows a month at the most you know so when there is a show happening people get stoked about it you know so a little geography test here for myself are you so <laughs> if i'm thinking right are you just a couple hours from like omaha then yeah, we're three hours north of Omaha. So do you end up playing Omaha quite a bit? Yeah, Omaha is like our second home. We play Sioux Falls in Omaha. We consider them both home shows, honestly. Me and my family actually traveled up there a couple years ago to go to uh, Mount Rushmore. And, oh, uh, sure. Really fell in love with South Dakota. I think it's like one of the most underrated states. It uh, definitely is. Most people don't realize. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of cows and corn here, but people don't realize that it is a really beautiful state. And I mean, if you don't like people, it's a good place to be because <laughs> I mean, again, there's only 850,000 people here and 
you know, there's a lot of open space. So, uh, I usually, I mean, I really enjoy, I'm in the, on the East side of the state. So this side of the state has a little less of the geography. We have the rolling plain or the rolling Hills and, uh, the river valleys, which is really pretty in its own way. But then the West side of the state, like where Mount Rushmore is, that's got like the badlands and there's tons of hiking and there's a lot of, a lot of really beautiful stuff out there. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't get a good rap for some reason, but it is a beautiful state. Well, it gets my approval for whatever that's <laughs> worth. Yeah, uh, we, for sure. We loved our time up there with the Badlands, yeah. and we definitely enjoyed our time up there, and Mount Rushmore was awesome. So, Yep. Did you, uh, quick question, did you uh, hike elk, what is it, Black Elk Peak? So we have three younger daughters, and uh-huh. hiking doesn't, I mean, we hike, but it's usually through, like, Walmart or something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, so we didn't really get to hike as much as we wanted to. It was a sure. lot more just kind of driving through. Oh, I get you. Yeah, I was just curious. There, I did. Um, I went out there and I hiked it this this fall, and I didn't realize it, but it's uh, it's like a seven. Uh, what is the elevation like? Almost eight thousand, and it, it's huge. And I'm not I'm not an athletic person <laughs> at all. And <laughs> it I was it was really hard. <laughs> I was I could not believe how hard of a how hard of a hike that was but it is the the highest point east of the rockies i guess oh very cool very cool so what does the rest of 2023 have in store for earth groans yeah that's a good question uh we're gonna try to tour as much as we possibly can uh we got some festivals this summer uh we're working on some more tour stuff for the summer and fall it's really just kind of we want to play as much as we possibly can you know whatever makes sense uh we just got off of tour last week so we're kind of fresh home so it's now we're going to start working hard on getting the summer dates figured out we uh we do have vinyl coming out for the new record we're waiting on that right now uh a whole bunch of new merch uh that we're going to be dropping here we're just kind of waiting to hear back on vinyl vinyl has been a it's been a weird one since covid really because they really got backed up there was a time when there was a year wait on vinyl now it's like anywhere from like one month to six months wait so it's kind of a gamble when you when you put in uh, an order for vinyl when you're going to get it back. But uh, yeah, so we're just kind of waiting on that before we know when when we're going to drop all this the new merch and we have a whole whole line of tongue tied merch that we're going to roll out. And yeah, so just trying to you know play a lot of shows and get some merch and vinyl out. So Jeremy, if if I was introducing somebody to to your band, what would be your number one pick for a song to choose? Woo. That's a, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, I'm going to, I would say it depends on what, what that person, you know, is used to listening to, but say off a of tongue tied, I think over the edge is a really, really safe pick because that song is probably the, the least amount of weirdness. <laughs> 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 that's just like a good straightforward metal core song with some good riffs. And, uh, you know, I mean, I write a lot of really weird stuff, but that song, uh, that song is like be straightforward, just good for for metalcore. Can I quote you real quick about Over the Edge? Sure. You said it's about staying true to what you're doing and not losing the passion. For me, I started doing music because of the passion I had behind it. You can't let that go. Amen. Tell us about a little bit of the, your lyric writing and where you draw inspiration from. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, with Over the Edge. I was in a place of being really, really frustrated with where the progress of my band and, and where we're at in the industry. The music industry is really hard and it's, it, nobody gets a free pass really. Um, you know, and it's like, it's one of those industries where you can, it's not like other industries where you work hard and you, you climb the ladder, like with, with the music industry, sometimes you, you do climb ladder and sometimes you stay in the same place. But anyways, long story, it's, it's a really, it's a hard industry to work in. And, um, you know, our band's never really taken off and yeah, we put, we've done a lot of really cool things. I'm really grateful for where we're at and everything and what we've been able to do. But at the same time, you know, I see other people, you know, getting bones and whatever. So the song is, is my, my frustration with the music industry. And, and in that same realm, I realized that, I'm getting really upset and overworked about something that I'm trying to do for the love of music, you know? And so it like, this song is kind of putting myself back in check a little bit. Like I, you know, I want to, I want to do music for the right reason. 
Um, I don't want to do music for the wrong reason. No matter how hard the industry is, I want to still keep that passion alive. And I don't want to sell out just for the, for the sake of trying to make it in the industry. So yeah, that's why the, you know, the last line is like, I won't, uh, I won't let this passion turn to poison. Cause I think it's really easy to do, especially as dudes We're like, Oh, well we need to be progressing. If we're not, you know, if we're not being successful, we're not progress seeing progress, we're failing. So that's really hard for me as somebody that's always wanting to see progress, always want to be climbing the ladder, moving to the next step. But there are times, especially within music, where that's not even sometimes the reality. Amen, brother. We have Jeremy from Earth Groans here. The EP out now is called Tongue Tied out of Solid State Records. What's your website, Jeremy? Earthgroansmusic.com. And you're on all the socials? You bet. You're going to go get Tongue Tied, the EP on Solid State Records, Earth Groans. Jeremy, we appreciate your time today, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.